If you want to write comics, it's a good idea to learn the six types of comic panel transitions. And this is according to an amazing book that I read a while ago, that's Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. There are many comic creators vouching for this book, and within reason. I will use some examples from these comics and other ones, but yeah, let's start. First, we need to understand what is closure. The gap between panels contains information that the reader and the comic creator understand. On the first example with the little closure, it's easy to understand that the lights in that house have been turned off and that the time it took to turn them off was uh, less than a second once you pull the switch, right? It's not like you need every millisecond to understand that. And in the second example, the closure is bigger, meaning there were more things that happened between the first panel and the second one. In the first panel, there are two characters and the light indicates it's during the daytime. Several hours happened between those two panels and yet we don't need every little detail to know that. So now that we understand closure, it's a pretty basic concept, let's start with the categories. And the first one is moment to moment. This requires very little closure because it is like a second or less of difference from one panel's moment to the next one. Change is very subtle. And some examples that illustrate that lights being turned on, off to sleep at night. Someone who had his eyes open and now he's closing them to show a struggle. A close-up. A flower starting to fly from someone's hand. And subtle changes of expressions, such as this princess who seemed relaxed in the first panel, but she looks worried on the next one. Number two, action to action. We have a single subject in this type of panel transition, whether it's a person, an animal, a scenery, and we basically have one action in the first panel and we go to the different action in the next one. For example, in the first panel, a bully ready to throw a punch to his victim and actually punching him in the next one. In the next, Poppy getting home in the first panel, walking slowly and tired, and then throwing herself into her bed. Ishida running, jumping between buildings and landing with style. I would have landed horribly. Poppy trying to smoke unsuccessfully. And probably my favorite, Olan reaching for his sword, taking it out and slicing his enemy's head. The action to action panel transition is often more used in American US comics. Meanwhile, manga, uh, Japanese comics basically, does take advantage of moment to moment panel transitions. And that's why, although the pacing may be faster in an American comic because of it, well, a Japanese comic has more clarity on making that emotional connection to the reader. Like, see how many panels the Japanese creators have invested in showing the expression and what the characters are feeling. Meanwhile, in the other one, it's just action, it's fast. And lots of dialogue. Number three. This means that while we are in the same scene or idea, but we may have a change of character or scenery. While in the last panel transition we had the same characters for different actions, in this panel transition we will change the characters, the subject essentially. The examples from Scott McCloud are too precious, like someone finishing a race, where in one panel we see the winner as a subject, and in the second one another person we cannot see is holding the clock. Then we have three subjects in the next one, a man, a woman, and a phone. And my favorite, a murderer ready to kill someone and, the next, and in the next panel show the city as the main focus while you read the scream of that victim being slaughtered. Thanks Scott McCloud. Other examples is simply switching from characters like the first encounter on Nasura's Bride. This, this works very well between lovers. Number 4. Scene to Scene According to McLeod, we need the reader's deductive reasoning in the scene to scene transitions in which we change space, time, and maybe even characters. 
For example, we saw the guy leaving instructions and then the princess waiting by herself at night. One of the characters is gone, the time shows that many hours have passed between the first panel and the second one, so you can see time and space changed. The next one, there's a woman wondering where her dear um, daughter, who disguises as a man, is in a totally different place and we see another character, or maybe it's her daughter, in a marketplace. This scene to scene panel transition also applies with the typical seven years later or whatever years later, whatever time you want to write. It's very effective for this type of scenario. Or for example, showing just different places, like showing different countries. Number five, aspect to aspect. Aspect to aspect bypasses time for the most part and sets a wandering eye on different aspects of a place, idea or mood. I love this one and I remember being very intentional about some of these panels in Winter Secrets to project a feeling of coziness and yet loneliness on a cabin in the middle of a snowy mountain. Or here showing it may be summer or spring Either way, it's very lively, it's full of wind, it's full of life, yet the expression of the girl contrasts that feeling. Or this one that I loved so much from Midnight Poppyland, showing super clearly she is at a dangerous place where seemingly vicious people gather at night, and honestly, this author is so good. I really recommend this story, it's going to be featured soon. Anyway, Scott McCloud's examples are just perfect showing Christmas in the first example with a creepy Santa, if I may add, and a guy relaxed on the grass contemplating the sky, and you know, you feel the mood. And now for the last category, which I hesitated to add, and you have to forgive my pronunciation, please, it's non sequitur, I have no idea. This panel transition doesn't have any logical relationship whatsoever between panels and I am including the weird examples that appear in the book. It's not used a lot so you do not have to worry too much about this one. Scott McCloud basically says even if these shapes may seem totally random, we are forcing the reader to consider them as a whole because we are putting them together like this. I think this maybe can work when you are, for example, making a mystery story, you may give the reader glimpses of what happens and the reader doesn't see any meaning behind it until the end and they have that aha moment remembering you actually showed them but they didn't understand it then until they read the rest of the story. Or maybe representing a weird dream that shows clues that of what can happen in the rest of the story anything like that. And well, that's it. Thank you for watching six types of comic panel transitions. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe on that red button over there, and comment down below what you want to see or questions you may have. If I don't have the answers, I will try to read the books that have them. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. Bye. Good luck. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. Thank you so much to Lily Dusk for allowing me to use her comics to show as an example in this video. Everyone else, every source is going to be linked in the description and thank you very much.